Well, I was on a path to li a, a literary world, really, because my first love was literature. Um, but then Mario Finlinson joined the, the school and he was very enthusiastic and completely changed the nature of the art room. And basically he, he persuaded me that I must do art. <laughs> so um, I was at a kind of a cross or fork, you know, and, um, and he, he told me all about St. Martin's and made that life very, sound very exciting and, you know, and full of opportunities and interesting people in particular. And yes, so I, I took that, that, that side of it. We were speaking earlier, you mentioned that uh, you had a prominent voice in your own home earlier on that I'm sure inspired some sort of interest in Gopla. Your mother, how much of an influence was she in this respect? My mother was a natural singer rather than a professional singer, so I just, it was, it was very foundational actually. It was a big source of a lot of, um, of certainly of Stabat Mater, where she sings a saeta in Stabat Mater and a, a very unique kind of contribution. And then I have worked with other singers and experimental singers, amazing singers actually. But then I returned, then I started to do work with my mother again for I Die of Sadness, Crying for You. And yes, I think it does stem from um, the power of the voice that I still have like ingrained in me from a very early age, from hearing her sing and so forth. <laughs> You will learn a little bit about Gobla, a little bit. There's objective information in there, so those people who don't know what it is will come away with some information. But at the same time, I'm taking you through it in a personal way. So it's my story, you could say. But it's about an unrequited love. You know, it's about failure or it's about sorrow it's about profound sorrow of one sort or another but it's always related to life and unrequited love and marginalization the marginalization of the woman and yet at the same time the defiance and the way that the character takes on society and insists on her mar marginalization as a form of empowerment I, I just love that you know and these qualities, are you seeing yourself in your own life? <laughs> I've been very privileged in a way. So my, I am, I have enjoyed marginalization in the artistic sense because it's from there that you make, can make powerful work. But in a way, <clears throat> I went to amazing art schools and I've had amazing teachers and I've always had amazing peers as well. So I've kind of existed in a context that has empowered me as well. But yes, one empowers oneself through one's work as well, <laughs> of course. <laughs>